Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you guys for joining us on this channel today. Today I'll be taking a look at a program by the name of Waveform 9 and I'll be using that in conjunction with FL Studio for Mac or FL20. And the reason why I'm doing this particular video or showing you the context of working with two different DAWs, in particular the MIDI tracks thereof, I know a lot of you guys are starting to experiment with the pattern generators and chord tracks and the standalone applications that create MIDI and patterns for you. Waveform 9 in particular has a very interesting approach to doing so. It's kind of a combination of everything Studio One Cubase and Captain have been doing in one program. And since it was on sale this past Labor Day, I figured I couldn't pass up on it because of these particular features. But if you're anything like me, you're going to want to use your main DAW for your drums, your arrangement, and just for your comfort zone. So I'm going to show you how to work between two or more DAWs without pulling your hair out. So in this particular track, I'm going to create a sample for myself to trap out in FL Studio using Waveform 9. So the first thing I want to do in Waveform 9, in case you've never seen it before, is that this DAW works in a very different way. But if you're familiar with Acid Pro and Logic and things like that, it'll come to you second nature. The particular features I'm going to show you are really easy to access. So hopefully you guys are able to follow along. At the bottom right, I'm going to check out my tempo. I'm working with a trap tempo, it'll be 140, and the tempo only matters because of A, double time, and the influence on my MIDI clips, and then B, for me to preview my sounds. Because I intend on working in FL, it doesn't even matter what sounds I pick, honestly. So the tempo is just there just to be there. Once it's a MIDI clip, it could be any tempo in your new DAW. Once I have that, what I'm gonna do is create a chord track. So I'm gonna extend this, create chords, click on new chord, and this is very similar to Studio One. You have a couple ways to do it. You can follow the statistics here from their analysts of a lot of uh, popular music. So if you click on five, it'll suggest six. And if you click on six, it'll suggest four, etc. Or you can go to this preset window and just pick a generic four chord progression. Um, you can preview these once you set up the tracks um, properly. So let's do that first. Let's just pick one. Let's extend it four bars. So we get four different chords. Let's go to track one, and what I wanna do is drag and drop an instrument to it. I'm gonna do synth, retro mod 106. This is a uh, Traction's emulation of the Rolling Juno. I'm gonna pick a generic default piano sound. I'm gonna hit this red plus to create a new clip. And because this particular DAW deals with tracks the way it does, your clips can be audio, MIDI, or automation. I'm gonna go to my pattern generator and I'm gonna click on chords. And right away, we're gonna see our chords mapped out. So that's a four, one, six, four progression. That one's pretty smooth, but if I want, I can also just change the scale. I can go to a Dorian scale. I can pick a different key on the fly and everything updates in real time. So that first chord sounds crazy because it's a diminished with that degree symbol. I'll go to my preset list and see if I can pick one that avoids any diminished chords, like four, five, one, five. So since I'm going for a trap mood, I'll do the four, one, five, one. And if I want, I can adjust these further so that they move more smoother. And to do that, we gotta manipulate the inversions. So you'd right click on the chord, do inversions. And this one, I'll probably do a plus one. And on that last one, same story, inversion plus one, or maybe a plus two to keep everything smooth and in pocket. Cool. I'm gonna pick up a new instrument as well. This time we'll do the Retro Mod Fat, which is emulating the Moog. We're gonna use a synth sound. And they have another module called Arpeggio, and it's probably my favorite that I've seen implemented in a program. Same story here, new pattern, new MIDI clip, do pattern generator, Arpeggio. This one gives us more options. And of course you can just kind of freestyle this. Um, you change the octave, of course. You can change the pattern length. And everything's really visual and instant, so you can kind of see what's happening. And then, of course, you can adjust the steps as well. And then each time you adjust the steps, you get different presets for which notes are triggered within the chord, which is very useful if you have a beat block or you're stuck on what your melody or track should be. Now, at any point in time, I can go back to my chord track and flip these chords out, or if I want, go to my scale and flip it to a different key or whatever. And everything that you use in this pattern generator mode will update in real time. So in 
this one, I want to change that inversion. This time we're going to use their retro lead, which is like the Nord lead sampler. And like I said, at this point, the sounds really don't matter. What you're trying to do is catch the groove and use these as placeholders. So new MIDI clip, pattern generator, we got melody and bass line. Bass line is straight ahead, it follows the root notes. You can choose different presets to kind of chop it up if you wish. Now, it's all over the place. It's really uplifting and techno-y, but I actually find that these are really fun to flip. So let's flip it. I'm gonna take all these tracks, I'm gonna hold Command and scroll up on the third mouse wheel to resize everything. I'll hold Command and select all three tracks. So, in fact, let's rename them first. In this particular program, you can't double click to rename, so you click it once and go to the bottom and rename everything. This is gonna show up in our export. So these are chords. Then I'm gonna click Command and highlight all three of these clips or have them all selected. Go to Export, Render to a File, go to my desktop, and we'll name it Trap It. <laughs> That'll be the prefix. And we're gonna render each track to a separate file, hit Render, boom, it's already on our desktop. Um, waveform and traction like to render in real time. You actually don't ever wait for it. It just does it as soon as you tell it to. So now I can go to FL Studio 20 or Studio One or Ableton Live's um, session view, and I can drag these MIDI clips in. Everything has its own track. You can replace these channels with different VSTs. And of course you could change your tempo to something more appropriate. In this example, I'll keep going to show you what I would do to it. So in this first track, we'll replace this with Omnisphere or something. And Omnisphere, especially with Trap, or if you're experimenting with your own sound palette, I would say go into the ARPs and maybe like the bells or something. Those are always really cool. I'm gonna check out the new Omnisphere hardware library real quick to see if they have any ARPs. There we go. Now on the kick track, which is our melody, we can replace this with Omnisphere as well. So in this particular one, I'm gonna go with a lead type sound. This ARP is really fast. In fact, I might delete some of those notes depending on when they repeat. And another cool thing you do, of course, is since this is more robotic in FL Studio, you can use your groove quantize this, use like an NPC swing on it to adjust it. And then you do this one more time and go to the humanize and deal with the levels only. Let's see what hip hop is talking about. This changes your velocity curve. And then of course, the last one was the bass. So I have an 808 here, adjust my envelopes real quick and then I can edit those notes as needed. And with my two main instruments, what I'll do is send them to the same mixer channel real quick and then halftime it. Or if you're using FL, grow speed it. And then once you have all those elements set up and you got everything routed and half timed and grow speed up, just add drums. It's just like adding water. Real simple, easy mathematics. So for me, understanding how that works and be able to bounce between your DAWs and use the strengths from each one and put them together is really fun. So in this particular example, if you're stuck on creating a melody or chord progression or something, you just want to experiment, then of course, jumping into something like Waveform 9 or Odyssey or something, you want to create the MIDI with. And that's kind of like making your own personal loop pack, I guess, for lack of better words. But anyway, I'm MG The Future. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely let us know in the box below. If you're on social media, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at MG The Future. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters as well. Until next time, guys, peace.